A thread by Pat Scopoliti. 25 December 2020, hashtag MAGA analysis, Christmas edition. The Great Reawakening, a renewed dream of America. General Flynn tells me the joy of the MAGA movement has returned. Our Christmas gift is a renewed dream for America. In case you didn't know, it's his birthday too. He's a Christmas baby. He tells me that there's a new spirit of patriotism that has arisen. Of course, we are his digital warriors, and that's a gigantic thing, far more important than has been understood in general. It marks a new era of participation. Citizen journalists, he names us. I, for one, am thrilled to share this Christmas morning with all of you, right here in my office in my home. It was a surprising gift this morning when SPE Flash, Steve, named me as part of the new media. I never had that thought before this morning. And look at the beautiful presentation Steve gives us in a flash. His image is of a strange new creature called Lincoln Trump and his list of years, 1776, 1861, 2020. Steve, just that list of years is a gift to us this Christmas morning. Thank you. I'm very earnest in proffering Steve's gift to every MAGA movement member. Each of those years was a grave moment of historic challenge, truly unique moments, change points, turning points, transformational forces unleashed and won by America. What General Flynn emphasized was this incredible fact. We won in a massive landslide. We won the 2020 election with a stunning voice of clarity in support of President Trump. And victory must be celebrated. Gifts must be unwrapped. As I pondered, his counsel, and his charge to me, I discovered an inner obstacle in my thinking. I was still falsely thinking, unconsciously, that elections are over when called by the old media the night after the polling place is closed. I cannot, cannot too strongly emphasize the propaganda benefit of this programming. We've all seen the memes going around about Dewey's wrongfully called victory. It's a prophetic story, indeed. I quote extensively, quote, Many of America's major newspapers had predicted a Dewey victory early on in the campaign. A New York Times, Times article editorialized that if Truman is nominated, he will be forced to wage the loneliest campaign in recent history. Perhaps not surprisingly, then, Truman chose not to use the press as a vehicle for getting his message across. Instead, in July 1948, he embarked on an ambitious 22,000-mile whistle-stop railroad and automobile campaign tour. At every destination, Truman asked crowds to help him keep his job as president. His eventual success in the election of, 18, of 1948 has been largely attributed to his direct interaction with the public and his appeal to the common voters as the political underdog. At the end of one of his campaign speeches, voices in the crowd could be heard yelling, give him hell, Harry. It didn't take long for the phrase to catch on and become Truman's unofficial campaign slogan. Give him hell, Donald. It wouldn't be difficult, difficult to flip out a few of the 1948 facts, flip in some 2020 facts, and the same story would be simply spot on. I often complain about how my great friend, John Stancic, not only forces me to read things I didn't plan to, but defeats me in heated debate. He's a very dangerous man. I'll beat you to the punch, John. Yes, I will reread. Unfreedom of the Press, Mark Levin, link in the thread to the Amazon purchase place. But from my first reading, I can say I do not recall this particular story being emphasized all the way back in our history. How is it that the old media gained this extraordinary, extra constitutional power? How did they become the arbiters of our electoral outcomes? 
I should say, pseudo arbiters, even false arbiters. And how did we ever come to think of a presidential election as a one day affair? However, and whenever that occurred, and perhaps it was a slow evolution, it was perhaps the greatest propaganda victory in history. I'll take a stab at guessing. The main character in our story was likely Edward Bernays in creating the science of propaganda and dating back to his work, the Committee on Public Information established by President Wilson during World War I. Wikipedia link in the thread. A simple reading of Bernays' story is chillingly informative, portending today's world. It's amazing to me how often we return to the Wilson era to find the roots of today's world and America's turn away from our Constitution. Wikipedia link in the thread to Edward Bernays. Ha! So right back at you, John Stancic. Here's another book for your reading list I bet you haven't taken in yet. Crystallizing Public Opinion, Edward L. Bernays, link in the thread. Joyfully manhandling our time machine's clutch and gear shifts, we burn time rubber back to now. Now, in 2016, Donald Trump termed the old media fake news. That might also call, be called Bernays' pill. Trump began the process of empowering our mind's freedom again. But, great teacher that he is, Trump could never have given us the anti-propaganda lesson of 2020's stolen landslide election, or this Christmas morning, shall I call it the attempted stolen election of 2020. Let's do a momentary negative scenario in a different world's 2050 history. In chronicling the downfall of America that commenced under that world's President Biden, the chapter heading is how to steal an entire election, how to steal an entire nation, purloin its history, and conscript its destiny. But this glorious Christmas morning, General Flynn assures us that it is a different world than this in, in an alternative universe. Back here on our Earth in this moment, we must celebrate the gift of our landslide victory. All right, stand by, folks. Twitter broke up the thread, so I'm going to find it again. Ah, there we go. So I'm going to go to 50 and then try to find 24. Ta-da! Question. What day has POTUS invited us to join him at Washington, D.C.? Answer. January 6th. Question. What day is that religiously? Answer. On the 12th day of Christmas, January 6th, we celebrate Three Kings Day. And for further joy for all who embrace prophetic symbols, what astronomical event took place in 2020? Answer, the return of the Christmas star. So, my three gifts that I'm unwrapping with childish joy this morning are these patriotic realizations. One, elections are not over on the day of voting. Two, the media does not arbitrate victors and losers. Three, the entire election process belongs to we the people. Picture a 12-year-old Pascual discovering that under the Christmas tree in 1972 were a sword, a spear, and a shield. Can you feel my almost adolescent heart rate increase, my breaths deepen, my arising manly soul within stir? Who played cowboys and Indians? I often chose to be an Indian, and my people defeated the evil cowboys. Offer me a white hat and a couple of pistols and a five-point sheriff star? Well, you could win me over. Go to West Point and observe respect for American Indian warriors. We came out of the Civil War a depleted and exhausted people. 
today's greatest fighting force in the world hearkens far more to our Indian wars than to the Civil War. They were honorable warriors, and they forged us into the fighting nation we are. Honor to them. That's part of the hellacious problem with today's enemies within. They have no honor. The American Indians were fighting for home and hunting grounds and for their existence and way of life. Today's enemies within are fighting to destroy our own home and way of life. For today, though, let us leave our enemies within as the fanciful imaginings of a young boy play fighting with his Christmas weapons. In my own actual voice, as an aging adult, I have a similar small story to share. In a previous home, I used to practice my sword work on my driveway, and I called it the most demon-free space in America. When I practice with my sword, I employ a meditation. I find my inner demons, my worst vices, and greatest weaknesses. I externalize them. I'll explain. You won't believe me, but one of my greatest vices is laziness, slothfulness. It's true. Moral turpitude is one of the greatest sins we, make, we may make, crimes in fact by law. I have named my inner demon of sloth by that name, though. His name is Turpitude. When I practice, I picture Turpitude in front of me, and I slay him. Like in any video game, of course, he arises again and must be slain again. Thrust, you're dead, vile demon. Ha! He rises again and takes his stance. Thrust! And so it goes. On a cold December morning, one year, probably 2011 or 2012, I was fighting my demons mightily, and the most amazing thing happened. An ancient, scarred, and grizzled raccoon slowly marched up behind me and addled past me to my right, laying down about six feet from me. We never made eye contact, for this was no moment of physical communication. This is, I affirm, a 100% true story. Rather, it was a moment of spiritual communion, and one that left the greatest mark upon my soul. Seeing him lie down there, I simply continued my demon slaying practices, glancing at him from time to time. After about 15 minutes, I could no longer see or hear his struggling, gently gurgling breaths. At first, he'd heaved some air in at gasps. He now wasn't and was still. Slowly, I walked over to check on him. and has moved his front paw at great exertion off the ground. Clearly he was still with us and he waved me off, both crying and smiling. I went back to work. This happened once more, waved off again. I noticed my demons were doing better maneuvers after that. So I stopped, walked over, sat down with him about two or three feet away. It wasn't long before he breathed his last breath and I swear I heard him say goodbye and thank you. But I don't speak raccoonese, so I'm not sure. My nameless raccoon warrior chose me and my driveway as his last resting place. Cold as it was, I did not fear for the condition of his corpse, and in honor left him right where he lay for the following three days. I imagined a fox or a vulture might come to attend his passing. None did. No other creature had the courage to face him or me. So on the third day, I completed a burial and funeral for him, and he lay in my own grave of the unnamed warrior. He did not stay buried. The following spring, I found his skeleton. It was unharmed. I gathered his bones and dug a much deeper grave from which I do not imagine he arose again, but one never knows in these matters. He still has a part of my heart right there with him, and no, I will never name him. He is beyond naming. Perhaps I may just name him Friend. General Flynn tells me, very literally, that there is a new patriot warrior spirit rising in America, as never before in our lifetimes. How may we not be grateful this Christmas Day in America we almost lost our honor as a nation. But imagine that word in its glory.
almost. Here I offer you a fictional version of Davy Crockett in his mythological role from my childhood. I have seen the debunkers, and for a time in my young manhood, I believed them. Today, I see the truth of this image, and I tell you, the debunkers stole this image from within my soul. Well, they didn't actually, just as they haven't actually stolen our 2020 election yet either, but they successfully covered up that image so that my soul's eye could not see or access its power and goodness. That is why, sir, I thank you this Christmas morning, General Flynn. You told me that a new patriot warrior spirit is rising and that we must celebrate that spirit today. I accept. I do celebrate and honor your charge to share this great joy and tidings of good news. I will soon take up my literal sword and work on my most basic fundamentals, stance, guard, step, strike, follow through, returning to stance, downward from upper right, back upward from lower left, change hands, downward from upper left, back upwards from lower right. My phenomenal wife, Kate Scopoliti, bought me my first swords back in 1998. In the years since my diagnosis as a severe type 2 diabetic, Kate has credited my sword practice as the single most powerful weapon in my arsenal of health. Amazing, no? St. Paul urges that we arm ourselves with belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the gospel of peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, the word of God. Who are we to question or gainsay him? Together, with our founding forefathers, both true believing and skeptic, I accept these gifts and turn them toward a new dream for a reawakened America. Merry Christmas to all. And to all, a new American patriotic dream. Well, a renewed dream indeed. Fie on the debunkers. They are thieves of the deepest, best truths in our souls, and they shall no longer dampen or destroy our joyful, patriotic spirits. Never again. Amen. I will be the greatest president that God ever created.